Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Can I please apologize for uh, not releasing a video last week? Um, I try and release one once a week at the weekends and unfortunately I've been very, very busy with work and I was working right the way through the weekend so didn't have any time to release something. On the bright side, that does mean that I've got lots and lots of footage for those of you that follow for my uh, outdoor uh, playlist rather than the photography stuff but yeah lots of videos coming up so apologies but thank you for sticking with me um gonna look at a point and shoot camera again this week um and uh for those of you that like everything done for you this is the fully automatic um and rather nice pentax zoom 60 so let's take a look So here we go, folks. This is the Pentax Zoom 60. Um, as I said, point and shoot camera, uh, fully automatic. Um, basically, if you're looking for a camera and either you're not aware or you don't care about how uh, a photograph is composed in terms of shutter speed or exposure settings or any of that, then something like this is absolutely perfect for you because it basically does everything for you. All you need to do is get the picture in the frame and uh, obviously push the button. Um, so yeah, obviously because it's all fully automatic, it's, it requires uh, batteries. Um, so let's start by putting that in. So on the bottom of the camera here, we have a battery door and they can be a little tricky to find, but what you're looking for, not necessarily this brand, but this model uh, of battery is what you're looking for. Um, the CRP2 battery. It looks a little bit like two AA stuck together, but it's actually shorter. The AA would sort of <clears throat> be up here somewhere. Um, but yeah, it can be a little expensive for a single battery, um, but that's what is required. So let's pop that in there first of all and close that up. Okay, so as you can see, the lens is covered up, but I'll come back to the lens in a moment. If we go around to the back as I usually do, we have first of all uh, two little indicator lights here regarding the flash. So as you can see, it's got a built in flash. Um, two lights. The first one, the top one is green when the flash is available. In other words, it's the battery is enough to actually fire the flash. And if the flash is gonna be required, then this uh, lower one lights up in red um, to say that it's required and it's going to fire. Next to that, we've got our viewfinder window. Um, as I've said to you uh, in other videos, um, obviously this is not a single lens reflex. So we're looking through this viewfinder rather than the lens. And you can see where we're looking through here. Um, and therefore, when you look through, uh, there are some parallax lines there. Um, I haven't finished it yet, but I am making a video all about parallax and uh, I'll explain exactly what those do in that video. Um, but in the meantime, yeah, uh, viewfinder, there for composing your picture. We've got here then a little LCD screen. Now, unfortunately, mine's uh, a bit damaged and so is not very clear to see. So I'm going to zoom in at this point when I edit the video. Uh, if I turn the camera on, so we've got a, a power uh, switch here, um, three positions, um, basically off, which is where it is now. If I slide it across the middle, that's turned the camera on. And uh, whether you can make these out or not, I don't know. But this little LCD screen uh, gives us uh, a few different bits of information. Uh, when there's a film loaded, it tells us our um, exposure count um, or the frame number, whichever. Uh, it shows what the lens um, uh, focal length is currently set to. Um, it indicates when you're either winding on or rewinding film. Um, uh, etc etc and it, it, the mode or whatever so I say I probably can't um, see too well on there um, but uh, hopefully you'll better get some idea uh, we've had another window down here for when there is a film loaded you can see hopefully the film speed um, and or um, film uh, uh, exposure number you know as in whether it's a 24 or a 36 film on the side here then we have a switch to open the back so just pop that open oops there we go and as you can see inside then, um, 35 millimeter film and sort of fairly standard um, setup. Um, film goes in this side, however, which is unusual. 
Um, not many cameras do this. Most 35 millimeters, uh, the film goes this side and it's dragged across to this reel. Uh, but it's the opposite way around on that, so don't get confused if you've not come across it before. Uh, you can probably see the contacts inside here uh, for uh, reading DX film. If you're not sure what DX film is, uh, I will post a link up in the uh, top right hand corner to my video on it. Um, but suffice to say, these contacts read, uh, amongst other things, the speed of the film that you're inserting. And this camera using DX can um, uh, adjust automatically then for um, film speeds from uh, 50 ISO up to uh, 1600 ISO. Um, if it's not a DX film that you're putting in, then it's going to assume um, 100 uh, ISO. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, obviously you would uh, adjust accordingly there. So I have got a, a roll of film here that has long since been uh, exposed and I just use it for testing because I just want to show you um, how this is loaded. As I say, it's a little unusual, um, partly because the film goes this side, but also because it is 40, fully automatic in terms of winding on, etc. So uh, this is DX film, but obviously I'm not going to be actually shooting anything with it. So it goes into this side of the camera, uh, which, oh dear. There we go. <laughs> um, and then if I turn this around, you can see here, hopefully, um, a red indicator, which is showing you where the film leader goes. Uh, you, so you just go over the top of this roll, basically, and uh, just make sure it's a little way in so that it's going to grab hold. Um, all I need to do now is close the back and turn it on. There you go. So the film has um, been taken up and automatically wound on to the first exposure. Um, and as you can see, the film here in little windows, in case you forgot uh, which type of film you put in uh, or how many shots you've got left. Um, yeah, so uh, I turn it off again. Um, even when the camera's off, uh, as long as the battery's good, obviously, it shows you how many um, shots you've taken so far. Obviously, I'm still on the first one. If I flip around to the front now, we, we've uh, got something in it. Um, our lens, uh, as you can probably read there, um, is uh, a zoom lens. So hence the name of the uh, the camera, obviously. It's uh, the, the Zoom 60. Um, so it's 38 millimeter um, and it ranges up to, oh, sorry, rather it, it can extend up to 60 millimeter. And in terms of its speed then, um, at 38 millimeter, it's f4.5 lens. And at the other end at 60 millimeter, it's uh, f6.7. So quite a, a variable lens. And obviously there's a macro option as well. If you're not familiar, macro just basically means that you're taking uh, pictures up close, but I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, also on the front, obviously we've got the flash as I mentioned earlier, but we've also got here the, the light meter. So that's the bit that actually decides obviously um, shutter speed and all that sort of stuff automatically, but also when it requires flash. So if I turn it on, let's get the button in front of me, uh, you'll see that by turning it on automatically opens the lens, which is rather nice. Uh, and it's now at its um, uh, normal setting. Um, on top, obviously, we've got our shutter release button, nice big and red, and it's actually uh, raised. But this is all one switch. Sorry, let's spin this round so you can see it properly. This is all one switch. So we've actually got uh, our zoom option here as well. So if I zoom in, you see the lens get uh, extended. And obviously, if I zoom out, reverse happens. Likewise, if I switch over to macro mode, you'll see uh, obviously it's now on, on macro setting and we get the little ma macro uh, indicator on here as well. Um, so yeah, all in all quite nice. And obviously um, when you turn it off, uh, put the button again, the lens pops away and covers it up, itself up to protect it. So it's rather um, simple because everything's done for you. But as I said to you, um, a lot of people are going to um, are going to appreciate that for whatever reason. I think you know if you were going to a party in low light and you want to take some pictures um, without having to worry about setting up for exposure and, and getting the correct lighting, that sort of stuff, this would be an easy way of doing it. So I've just turned the water the camera to a bit of light so I can show you actually how to take a photograph. So it's turned on at the moment, uh, obviously on its sort of standard setting, I'm not zooming in or anything. If I half press the uh, shutter, it's telling me that the flash is ready, but it isn't required to fire. And you can see the film winding on as I take a photograph. If I cover the um, 
front of the camera so that it's a bit dark. You'll see if I half press, it's now saying um, that uh, the flash is ready, but also that it is now required. So if I take a shot like that, you'll see the flash fire, hopefully. Um, and as I said to you, when it gets to the end, uh, the film will automatically wind back. So all in all, I think, you know, uh, nice, simple camera, but obviously, you know, very useful um, and uh, quite well made. It's quite sturdy. It's relatively light. I've never weighed it. Um, but with telephoto, macro and everything being automatic for you, quite versatile. So there you go. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, just want to quickly say again, a big thank you to everybody that's subscribed in the last while. Um, for everybody that's commenting and liking my videos, I truly, truly appreciate you all and thank you very much. Um, see you next time for um, more uh, either photographic goodness or perhaps uh, one of my outdoor videos if, uh, if that's your thing too. So good luck, have a good week and I'll see you next time. Thank you.